Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Kenyon Williams. I'm professor of percussion here at Minnesota State University, Moorhead. I was recently asked by your teacher if I'd be willing to give a quick tour of the world of percussion, so I thought perhaps the best way to do that would be to have you come through our own percussion studio here at MSUM. We're very fortunate at Minnesota State to have a wide variety of percussion that reflects music traditions from all around the world. So I first thought we'd start with some of the more traditional sounds of what we consider the European percussion tradition, music that comes from the classical composers like Beethoven, Beethoven, Mahler, Brahms, Tchaikovsky, and even on into uh, solo percussion, which has a lot of unique instruments and a lot of unique sounds. So, if you want to come on in the studio, I'll show you how it works. Now behind me are considered some of the most famous instruments in percussion. These are actually the first instruments ever to be written for in the classical percussion world. The first symphonies that began to use percussion first began to use percussion in this form. These instruments are called timpani. That's the Italian name for them. In uh, England and, the, and uh, the United States, they're often called kettle drums as well. As you can see, they're big drums. They typically come in a group of four or five. They're at almost every symphony concert. If you ever get a chance to go see the Fargo Moorhead Symphony, you'll see these instruments used a lot. And uh, they perform as a, both a melodic and a rhythmic accompaniment to the orchestra. You can hear them in a lot of music that you may have grown up listening to. For example, George of the Jungle, that's one of the more famous uh, tunes that uses timpani quite a bit. Timpani are used not only for loud notes, but also for very soft notes. Another very common instrument found in the orchestra and in our percussion section here at MSUM is the snare drum. Now the snare drum is basically just a two-headed drum that has a set of snares on the bottom. If I take this off, you can see these cables. And whenever I pull the switch, those cables snap onto the drum, and that gives it a very unique sound. So when I play it, you get a sound like this. When I turn the snares off, you get what's called a tenor drum sound, which is very So, there's a snare drum plays as both a snare and a tenor. Now, as you can see, I have a lot of other percussion instruments scattered around. Right now, students at the MSU and Percussion Studio are busy recording some projects that they've put together, some pieces that they're performing. For example, and this, this student right here is playing um, snare, a piece that calls for him to play snare drum, and this instrument here. This is a bass drum. Now, we're normally thinking, used to thinking of a bass drum in orchestra that's hit sideways. This bass drum has been placed flat and can be played with sticks to make that low bass sound that we're commonly used to hearing. Put that with the snare drum and you get a very unique sound. Okay, then you have, of course, over here, some wood blocks. These are just pieces of wood with little slits in them that give a very high ticky sound. And then you have, of course, some maracas. These are instruments that actually come from South America, They're used a lot in Afro-Cuban music. And, of course, you may be familiar with how they're normally played. In our culture, we learn to play them the Cuban way, which is like this. But in many cultures, these are considered very virtuosic, very virtuosic instruments. That means made to be played by very advanced players. For example, in, in South American country of Venezuela, they play maracas like this. makes for a very unique sound. Also behind me here is one of my favorite instruments of percussion. This is commonly called a gong, although this isn't really a gong. A gong technically has a big kind of middle area that's raised up. We call it the boss, and a gong gives a very specific pitch. This is actually a tam-tam. A tam-tam is flat, and when you hit it, there's no specific sound that it produces. You can't really hum an A or a G or a specific sound. Instead, you get this sound. Now, I'm going to bring over here to the side, and I'm going to show you some more of my favorite instruments over here. This student, to the side of the other student we were just looking at, has a different setup that has some similar instruments. 
Now, as you saw before, I have another Tam Tam behind me. This one gives an even deeper, darker sound than the other one because it's bigger. Also, we have some instruments that are what are called auxiliary percussion instruments. Auxiliary percussion instruments are used in uh, kind of as the background oftentimes in orchestra and band arrangements and in percussion ensemble pieces too. For example, this instrument is called a tambourine. As you can see, it's a single headed instrument with jingles, typically played like this. Notice it's struck and given a roll sound. That roll is that continuous uh, jingle sound by shaking it. Seen it in your church or in a rock and roll context played like this. It can be played so many different ways to make so many unique sounds, even played with one finger. That gives it what's called a finger roll sound. There we go. Now, here we have again another wood block, a little lower than the other one. And this is a unique instrument here, this is called a ratchet. A ratchet is oftentimes used as a silly sound effect, designed to make you almost laugh, and you hear it a lot of times in uh, cartoons, the sound of someone winding up a toy or a car. And this is another one of my favorite instruments. This is a vibra slap. This is a rather silly instrument. It's actually an imitation of an ancient percussion instrument. Back uh, for hundreds of years, people have used, especially in South America, a, uh, the, the jawbone, uh, the dried out jawbone of an animal, for example, a donkey or a, uh, or a cow, but typically a donkey's dried out jawbone. And when it's dried out and struck, the teeth rattle. Now in the 1960s, a gentleman by the name of Martin Cohen decided to make a more, uh, a, a, an instrument that didn't involve the death of an animal. So he made this instrument here called a vibra slap that imitates the sound of that struck jawbone. And it sounds like this. Yeah, so kind of a fun sound there. And this, of course, is a very unique instrument. This is a giant hammer that belongs in a piece actually written by the great German composer Gustav Mahler. In Gustav Mahler's Symphony No. 6, he calls for the percussionist to strike a large wooden box with a large hammer to make the maximum impact, crazy loud sound that it can. The piece that my students are working on right now actually calls for the student to play the same Mahler hammer. It shows up very rarely, but it does show up. So let me play this one for you. You can see a really big, impressive, loud sound on that one. And of course, when we talk about auxiliary percussion, we talk about, again, instruments that are commonly used as background, not usually the focus of a piece. For example, we can't forget the famous triangle played struck as one note or with rolls. And I'm certainly I don't want to forget some of my other set of my favorite instruments, the crash cymbals. Now, as you've learned, many instruments that are used in percussion come from European origins, but many of them also come from many different cultures around the world. For example, the maracas that come from Cuba also are part of the culture from Cuba that involves these unique instruments. These are called bongos, and these are congas. Notice they're very different instruments. A lot of people get them confused, and they assume any instrument that's hit by the hand with the hands is called a bongo. Well, they're not. Bongos are much smaller. They make a higher sound. And then you have congas, which make a much lower sound. And you even have another instrument here that I'm sitting on that's called a cajon. A cajon is basically a wooden box that is struck with the hands, and it makes usually a pretty low sound and a high sound. So it can be used especially a lot today in popular music in America, kind of a rock and roll. I'll play a little bit of a piece I'm working on right now that involves using all five of these instruments, one, two, three, four, five, at the same time. It's a little bit of a piece called Chatterbox. goes on from there. Another instrument that we have in the percussion studio right now that's pretty unique is this. This instrument is called a wind machine. 
Part of the percussion section is not only to provide rhythm and even provide melodic accompaniment, but at times we're also called upon to provide special effects. For example, there's pieces in the orchestra repertoire and band repertoire where the composer wants the sound of wind going through the audit auditorium. One of the more famous pieces that uses this instrument here is a piece by Fernand Groff called uh, the Grand Canyon Suite, where the composer tries to depict the sound of traveling in a raft or traveling in a donkey down the magnificent Grand Canyon in, south, in the southern United States. So, to do that, you have this big barrel that then has a cloth draped over it, as you can see, and I turn the handle, it makes the sound effect of wind. Probably the most famous instrument percussion is the instrument behind me. This is called a drum set. A drum set consists of a collection of drums. First off, you have the snare drum, like we discussed earlier, but instead of using an orchestra, it's used in a rock or a jazz setting. Then you have a series of toms, and of course, a series of cymbals that all give very different sounds. And they're all played in different styles of music. For example, let me play for you a little bit of a rock beat. Then it could be performed in a different style that's called jazz. Jazz has what, uh, what we would consider kind of a swing feeling, and jazz would go like this. And there's so many other styles. For example, there's funk. And then you have styles, for example, that are from South America. Styles like bossa nova. And then, for example, one of my favorites is a style called the mambo. Most of the percussion instruments we've been talking about up to now were designed to be played with other musicians. They're designed to be played with bands or orchestras or rock bands. This instrument was actually designed primarily at first as a solo instrument. This is an instrument that's called a marimba. A marimba actually comes from South America where it's a very much a part of the culture of many South American uh, countries. But in the United States it kind of changed into a much larger, uh, more uh, technically designed instrument than the ones you may see today down, for example, in Mexico or Venezuela. This instrument has wooden bars on top, typically rosewood, a very rare and expensive hardwood, and then it has some long pipes underneath that make the notes ring a long time. Gives it a very rich, woody sound. Now, some of you may look at it and go, isn't that a xylophone? A marimba and a xylophone are very, very similar, except the marimba has much smaller bars and much, much smaller and thinner tubes underneath, which gives it a very high pinky sound, pink, 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 with very little sustain, which means the notes don't ring very long. And the great thing about a marimba is it's designed primarily to be a soloist instrument, just like a classical guitar oftentimes is used for solo guitar playing, maybe with a singer. A marimba can be used for very soft and beautiful sounds, or it can be used for very fast and exciting pieces, like this one I'm working on right now called Tiger Dance. It's very important to know that not all percussion is designed to be just loud or rhythmic. Much percussion is designed to be melodic. For example, here we have what are called the bells, or often known as the glockenspiel. These are used in a lot of symphonic music. Some other melodic instruments that we use a lot in percussion include, for example, the vibraphone. The vibraphone is a fairly new invention. It was actually invented in the, in the beginning of the 20th century, in the early 1900s, and it's used primarily for jazz. And like the marimba, it's often performed with four mouths.
Another melodic percussion instrument you're probably very familiar with is the xylophone. As I mentioned, it's very similar to a marimba, but it has much smaller bars and shorter resonators, these tubes as we call them underneath, resonators, and it makes a much higher tinkly sound. Now we've been talking about a lot of percussion instruments, some of which are really big and expensive and it takes an awful lot of time to learn how to play them and it takes even more time to manufacture them. But the fact of the matter is, percussion instruments by definition are anything that is struck, even something as simple as a tin can. An American composer by the name of John Cage in the 1930s and 40s really began to explore how to write percussion instruments as solo and ensemble, solo ensemble instruments for the first time. He's considered one of the founders of what we call the modern percussion ensemble. A percussion ensemble is a group of percussionists performing just percussion instruments. And when Cage was first writing, he was young, he didn't have a lot of money, he couldn't afford fancy marimbas or timpanis or gongs, so what he wrote for instead were things that he and his friends could literally buy cheap or would find in the trash. Things like tin cans, maracas, even two pieces of wood. In South America, these are called claves. And so he would write for those, and even a little simple cowbell. Not expensive, but easily performed on. And when you put them together, you can get some really unique colors from a tin can and a cowbell. Much of American percussion and popular music owes its great debt of gratitude to the musicians and the cultures of Western Africa. One of my favorite parts of the MSU and Percussion Collection is this collection of instruments. These actually come from the country called Ghana and is part of the Awe people of Ghana. These, this collection of drums reflects a variety of sounds and colors that you'd find today practiced in West Africa but can be heard going back hundreds if not thousands of years. You have all kinds of double bells. For example, these iron bells. This is called, in West Africa, a gongko. Then you have another form of what we called earlier a maraca, although this is actually the predecessor to it. This is an instrument very similar. This instrument comes from, again, West Africa. It's called an ahatse, and it's played like Then you also have a wide variety of drums. Here we have some hand-carved ones from Ghana. This instrument is called a pan logo. It's made to be played with the hands. And as you can see, it's one solid piece of wood. If you look inside there, it's all hand-carved. Um, I was very fortunate. I've been to, had two opportunities now to go and study in Ghana. And each time I brought back some instruments for my students to perform on here at MSUM. This is the grandfather of the instrument we saw earlier called the congas. Remember those congas and bongos? When those instruments were first invented, they were invented by slaves who were brought over from West Africa. They wanted to recreate the sounds of Africa they grew up with, but they didn't have access to the hardwoods that they had back in Africa. So instead, they created their own version of those same drums, and they made, invented, what we call today the conga. Another instrument that you're probably curious about is this one. This is probably one of the biggest drums in our whole collection. This is a lead drum used in the Ghanaian uh, culture. It's called an achimevu. An achimevu is a loud, loud drum designed to be heard over a large distance. And uh, I'm going to play it with one of these sticks here. Look on the side. So oftentimes a musician would play something like this. and it makes all kinds of unique sounds and colors. It's typically performed actually on a stand that puts it out jutting out sideways. I'm kind of just holding it up right now. One instrument that many of you may already be familiar with too is this. This is called a djembe. This instrument does not come from the Ghanaian people, but it is commonly used today in Ghana. It actually comes from areas a little further over uh, in Western Africa called Senegal and places like Togo. And this instrument it is a goblet shaped drum, again traditionally hand carved from one piece of wood, it is played with the hands and it makes a wonderful variety of sounds from really low pitches like this to really high pitches. So when it's played, it can oftentimes be played with a whole group of other musicians all playing djembe's to make sounds that in Africa would oftentimes go way out into the harvest fields. Like
and it makes all kinds of great sounds there for percussion. And I want to point out too how innovative the people of Africa are. Many of them, for example, simply make their not only hand carve their own instruments, but also hand carve their own sticks. Even the stick here, as you can tell, is a, literally just a stick that my teacher pulled off of a tree and then carved and whittled down for me to use when I perform the music here of West Africa. Cultures all around the world use percussion for so many different reasons. Many cultures use percussion primarily for rhythmic accompaniment, like we saw in the music of Cuba with the congas and the bongos, or in Africa where it's oftentimes used for the djembes and the achimevus and ahatses like we saw. In Indonesia, percussion is primarily used as a melodic instrument. This is an interesting collection of instruments called a gamelan that comes from central Java, Java being the largest island in Indonesia. And it is a collection of all kinds of struck percussion instruments traditionally made out of bronze. And they make all sorts of pretty sounds. And they also are played with these large gong-like instruments. This is a called a gong agong and a gong suwakan. And these gongs, unlike the tam-tam we saw earlier, you can see the uh, indentation, the big push out of the front that gives them a specific pitch. And when they're all played at once, they make a beautiful, almost heavenly collection of sounds. I'd like to conclude our tour of MSUN's percussion studio with these instruments. These instruments are called steel pans in the island of Trinidad, where they're from. In the United States, we call them steel drums. They're part of what's probably our most famous percussion ensemble at MSUM, a group called Fuego Tropical. Fuego Tropical means tropical fire, and this ensemble is designed to bring together the fiery sounds of the Caribbean, especially the sounds of Trinidad. These drums are often used in a lot of tropical Caribbean style settings, even in movie soundtracks. For example, you may recognize this one. That's right, a little bit of The Little Mermaid. That's the sound of that soundtrack to give you that sense of being there in the ocean with Ariel. Now, these instruments are very unique. They're made out of one solid piece of metal. If you look at them, and I'll take it off for you, it's literally just a series of tuned dents, each one of which is carefully handcrafted so that it makes a specific pitch. If you look on the bottom, so you can see there's no electronics, not plugged in. This is what's called an acoustic instrument. Acoustic instruments don't need electricity to work. Everything I've showed you today, actually, is an acoustic instrument. So when I take the steel drum, for example, and I hit these notes, you can see the bigger the dent, the lower the pitch, and the smaller the dent, the higher the pitch. So, I hope you've enjoyed our tour of the MSUM Percussion Studio. And as ever, I really encourage you to come check out all the great live music we have, not only here at MSUM, but at all the universities all around the wonderful Fargo-Moorhead area. Go see the live percussion, the Fargo-Moorhead Symphony. Go see how percussion is accompanying the FM opera. There's so much great live music. And it's so much fun for me to be able to share with you a little bit of how percussion is a part of that in our world today. Take care and have a great day.